Stick around, this is gonna be a fun one. Hey, what are you at? My name is Troy and welcome to Facility D20, a small tabletop gaming channel where we like to craft and build terrain, paint miniatures, and play and talk about some of your favorite games like Warhammer 40K or Dungeons and Dragons. Today I got a special project though I'm super excited about because not only am I a huge Harry Potter fan, but I also got to work with my buddy, Eddie, over on Newfie Movie Reactions. Now, if you haven't checked out Newfie Movie Reactions, Eddie is going through all the Harry Potter movies and he's reacting to them. And it's the first time he's ever seen them, so it's real fun to uh, watch him go through that. Here's a little clip of Eddie's channel. That's how you disrupt the exam. Oh, it blew up. <laughs> That's how it's done. That's how. That's why I like those guys. They're friggin' awesome. <laughs> yes. Mm. So head on over to Eddie's channel and tell him Facility D20 sent you. So when me and Eddie decided to work together, we thought it would be pretty cool if I built like not a book nook, but more like a Blu-ray display, we'll call it, where I could uh, incorporate all the Harry Potter movies in them. So we decided to do something like this, and I. Set out and I started to build this pretty cool diorama and I'm super excited to show you guys. So come on in, let's get started. So this was a pretty cool print that I found on Thingiverse. The print settings were pretty standard with a 0.2 millimeter quality and a 15% infill. Once I checked the print to make sure it was gonna work out, it was ready to go onto printer. So guys, I'd like to take a second and ask you to consider subscribing to this channel. We're always up to something fun in the facility and it's really helpful for us small YouTube channels. It means the world to us and we really appreciate it. This print turned out really well. Uh, these time lapse are always fun to watch. I was worried that it was gonna stick to the bed, but it popped off pretty easy. Had a few bits of stranding here and there. You can see I had to uh, clean it up. But there's a good old trick for that. The flame trick. So once I melted away any of the excess plastic, I had to clean up a bit of a misprint at the bridge. It's uh, too bad this didn't print, but I had a plan to fix it. And it involved toothpicks. Pretty simple. This is such an uh, iconic bridge in the movie that you really wouldn't want anything bad to happen to it. Then it was time to paint and eat a lassie bun, have some coffee, and get the priming with a mixture of Mod Podge and paint. So I can tell this is definitely going to be a little hard to paint because it's hard to get my paint brush down on all those little nooks and crannies here. But so far so good, this um, base coat mixture is applying nicely, a uh, little slow going, but hey, it's progress. Then it was time to do the base coat with some Vallejo Air Earth Coat. So guys, I've got a few Easter eggs hidden in this video. Somewhere in here, there's a reference to my favorite Harry Potter movie. See if you guys can guess it in the comments. And I also clipped in a scene from every single movie. It'd be cool if uh, somebody could try to find them and tag them in the description. Now that the brown base coat is down, I'm gonna go in with some bone white, go over the top of it, and I'm thinking the combination of those two colors is gonna bring it up to that nice grayish beige color that you see in the movies all the time. I'm excited, let's do it. So this highlight of this bone really helped to bring these buildings out. You can see as soon as it hits it, it really makes a pop. A couple of shades of blue, we're gonna hit this roof and I think this is really gonna bring this to life. And I dropped my paint. You want to use an old brush working with 3D uh, printed miniatures and stuff because it's real hard on your brushes. The layer lines really tears it up. Once that was done, it was time to base coat all these rocks. The cliff face. So I just went in with a nice dark gray color and got the paint in there. If 
Boom, just like that, the rest of the grounds were painted up, even painted little pathways. If you don't recognize those white houses, it's for the greenhouses. And this is called the Army Painter Quick Dip Method, where you take some polyurethane wood stain and you just apply it to uh, the model or miniature. Now it looks like it's making a big mess, but don't worry, when this dries it adds lots of texture and shading to the model pretty quickly. And it works good with 3D printed parts because of the layer lines. But once you're done, you really need to get in there with some matte varnish and hit this whole thing up so you take that shine. You can see the shine in it here now. And the matte varnish just takes that shine right out. Once that was done, I just went in with some light gray and I dry brushed up this entire thing. The buildings, the roof, the cliff face, everything except for the grass. Yep, I even painted my hand. Yeah, I do that a lot when I'm dry brushing, try to get that bit of paint off, I end up painting my hands. Once that was done, I took some PVA glue and pretty much painted over all the green. And I wanted to add some flock to this, so it wasn't just a basic paint job, I wanted to do something a little more special. So once that was done, I put it on a tray, and then I went in with a dark green flock, followed by a green flock. And this is to add texture to the grass. I let it set in the glue for a while and then uh, cleaned off any excess and put it back in the bag for next time. There you go. Next I hit it with some matte varnish again and this was just to help stick down this uh, flock. So it wouldn't be falling off all the time. And then I wanted to do something real special with the water, so I went ahead and mixed up some Vallejo water effects. This here boathouse in this ocean leading up to Hogwarts is uh, real special. It was a, you know, your first look at Hogwarts here, and I wanted to do something real special through the water, so Vallejo water effects is the way to go. Now, when this dries, it dries a lot darker than it looks there now. Just kind of mush it around in there. And you see it dried up nice and dark blue and then I hit the waves with just a little bit of dry brush of white just to add some white caps to the waves. Now that this part of the build is done I'm excited to move into building the box that's going to house all the Blu-rays. I'm also going to make this box big enough to hold all the Fantastic Beast Blu-rays when they come out as well. And I got a really cool custom stain that I got worked out to kind of make this box look sharp. I'm super excited. Let's get at it. Moving on to the wood shop and some woodworking. So I pretty much built this out of good one side plywood. So I made every little section of the box, tried to make nice clean cuts. Give the edges a little sanding to clean up any splinters. And then I took them all and gave them one good sanding with the orbital sander. I got these here veneer strips, which is wood on the front with a bit of glue on the back. I'm going to apply them to the edges of the plywood here to clean it up and give it a better wood grain look. So it's not so rough looking and I'm finished. All you got to do is flush up one edge, uh, apply some heat to activate the glue and then trim out the excess when you're done. So boys, I got some bad news for you, or maybe some good news for some of you. But uh, I think if I ended up in a house in Hogwarts, it'd end up being Slytherin. Hey, my quest for power would be insatiable, what can I say? I think it would land me in Slytherin for sure. Once you get this all heated up and glued on, it's just uh, a matter of trimming off the excess. And then I'm going to pack this thing together and start staining it. As easy as that. Just a little exacto blade here to trim off the excess veneer. And these things were looking pretty good for plywood. Then I used a little bit of carpenter's glue and a brad nail gun. Despite what it looks like in the video, my fingers weren't that close to the nail. So I let this dry overnight and then I decided to go ahead and fill these nail holes with some wood filler.
Now, here's the standing process. So, first I had done the inside the box. But step one is to use a black one part stain, and this has the um, clear coat and the stain all in one. And the reason you want to do this first is to add some uh, protection to the wood so the next level of stain isn't so uh, absorbent into the wood. Make sure you clean it off good with the rag. And then part two is a semi-transparent water-based gray stain. Now you want to apply this with the wood grain pattern and you want to go very carefully and you try not to leave any brush strokes. So just gentle, gentle wipes here until you get it uh, nice and smooth. Once that dries, it's a wet sanding to take off any dust. Make that wood nice and smooth. And just like turning back time, you pretty much just gotta do it all over again. A second coat of semi-transparent gray, and this is to bring it up to that nice tone that you see the finished product in. Very thin and very gentle. Once that was done, it's the polyurethane clear coat. Now, you want to do the same process with this as well. Very, very thin, light coats. Don't worry about some of the bubbles and stuff. This will all settle out with gravity. Make sure you leave it to dry in a warm place. So for the bottom, I knew this was going to be sliding around on some pieces of furniture, maybe a TV stand, so I decided to put a nice piece of soft foam core on the bottom. And I just glued this on with some Elmer's white glue. And then some carpenter glue, and it was time to put Hogwarts on the top. Fits like a glove. Then I went into Blender and I drafted up this spacer for the bottom and put some holes in it to wire some LEDs. And my plan here was for this to hold the Elder Wand and kind of light it up on the bottom of this box. Once it was printed, I primed it black and then got to work wiring it with some LEDs. Then I added this little magical effect with this elder wand that I got. Uh, my wife gave me for Christmas one time in my stocking. <laughs> so I figured this would be a good use for it. Then it was time to solder all the connections up. I wired in a switch and a nine volt battery. Glued it in place, glued the battery in place. And then it was time to add the elder wand. I just slid this on the little hooks that I printed, glued it in with some hot glue, and then I realized that black wasn't the best decision for this box, so I decided to paint the inside gray, make some fascia out of some foam core to look like some bricks. I just used a sculpting tool to indent the foam. Turned out pretty good. Hit it with some Mod Podge and primer, and this was to hopefully help the foam keep its shape. Set that out to dry. Then a bit of hot glue and I applied it to the face of this box that I made. And this really helped with the contrast of the wine standing out. It made it a lot more visible than the black. So I'm kind of glad that I did this. But there we light. Once that was done, I just give it a quick dry brush with some light gray just to kind of Add a little bit of detailing to this brickwork here. And then a big shout out to my buddy Mike and Tiffany. They cut out some of these decals that I wanted to apply to the side with their circuit machine. So that was super cool of them. And I wanted to do a real subtle sticker. So I used a real dark gray as close to the box as I could. Supplied the transfer sheets and then very carefully applied the stickers to the box. Use the car to kind of stick them on there and then peel off the transfer tape. 
and hope for the best. Luckily, I didn't pull anything off, and it stuck on perfectly. No bubbles or anything. And then it was the Hogwarts logo. This one I was super worried about because it had a lot of small little parts, but uh, it took a little bit of time, but I carefully got it on there, and it went on there perfect. So here you can see I added a few. This is the Hogwarts, the Harry Potter, the HP on the back, and then the Deathly Hollows and Harry Potter on the side. Then it was time to add the Blu-rays and the wand. The stickers are very subtle, but very nice. Super happy with how this turned out. Very proud of it. I got some cool builds here. I'll link them over on the side here. And don't forget to go over and check out Eddie's channel too. He's super fun to watch. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you next time.